of he lapped me a couple times. Derek Daly Racing School, Las Vegas, V Town. Very difficult stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. <laughs> Moving on through the production office. This is our um, a very important part of the production yeah. case. Yeah. The blow pops. This is where they put the dreidel. This is our backup DJ right here. If I go down, Woo! he's always DJ here. DJ Sam, I am. What's up? This is the Erica. She's the. Um, she writes all our music. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> On my good days. Yeah. yeah. On her bad days, she performs it. Well, whenever we're feeling yeah, bad, really bad days. In a bad mood, we come here and talk to Erica, and she puts us in a good mood. I try. She's always smiling. I try. Like, show your smile. Give. Her. <laughs> Except for that picture you drew of me. I was frowning. Oh, but it's it's a serious moment. Okay. You notice how much bigger the production office is than the, the dressing room? The production office is way bigger than the dressing room. It's like four dressing rooms could fit inside here. Priorities. Arizona must have been a big thing. I mean, I've been reading in the interviews, you got a wife, you got some dogs, right? Yeah. And uh, and you suddenly relocate to LA. I mean, what was going through your mind at that time to, to meet guys that you hadn't even met before? Um, I pretty much tried not to think about it at all. I just kind of went, you know, just focus on, on just doing the music and try not to think too much about um, how pissed my wife was here. <laughs> <laughs> or how sad she was that I was gone, or whether or not my dogs even knew that I wasn't there anymore. How did you put it to your wife? Did you say, sorry, i got to go, I might be gone for some time, but you know, when I come back I'll be a rock star and, and you can move out to an L.A. mansion with me? Was, was that how, how you sold it to her? Well, I mean, the, the only reason why she didn't come with me in the first place is just because we own some property. And I didn't want to, like, just, you know, throw all my eggs in, into one basket. I wanted to leave at least one egg out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, we just kind of... We're being um, just kind of as practical as we possibly could, mm. you know, because I didn't know how well we would get. You which, know, work. which to most people would still be impractical. Yeah, yeah. I mean, most most people, yeah, it'd be insane. But like, what we wanted, what I was like really just hoping to do was just kind of come out and find out what these guys were all about. Because I didn't know that we would we would click so well, yeah. so fast. There's something inside me that pulls beneath the surface, consuming. I've got to ask you this, you've suffered this rumor that's been going around the industry that you're a manufactured boy band. <laughs> you, you guys have a lot of people watching and mm. we get to say to all these people that we wouldn't have gotten a publishing deal first if we didn't write our own songs. Mm. So that rumor you heard is not yeah. true. And not only that, but it's kind of hard to manufacture a band <laughs> that, that knew each other their entire lives. Yeah. Yeah. Try, try to find one, <laughs> try to find one uh, record industry executive that could manufacture a piece of crap like us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'd, be, we'd be way more polished if they had manufactured us. Right. The power of your vocals on stage, like spot on for what you hear on the album and the, and the notes that you hold on and the way you sing. People keep asking you about the effects that you use and he doesn't use any effects. It's all pure up on stage, it's, it's, yeah? Well, yeah, I mean, it's like, we use like typical effects that any band in any pub or any bar or any venue would be able to use, like, you know, delays, reverbs, things like that. But we don't run any tape, any we don't loop any anything, not even samples. Everything that you hear on the record is being performed physically by somebody on stage. A funny thing about uh about coming to these venues and being in a band is that the, uh, when you wake up you come out of your bus, you have no idea where you're going because you potentially, you know, a lot of times you've never been there before. So you see these, your production team sets these up every morning so that when you come in and you're all groggy, you kind of look here and you go, okay, we're trying to find the catering. And you've got catering. Hello. Rice, potatoes, and meats. You know where you're going now? Um, it changes every day depending on who does the catering. Uh, usually they hire out like a local crew who kind of, you know, is from the area. They come in, they cook some stuff. 
kind of it can, it can kind of be sketchy because then you've got me, we're not gonna put you, you know, on the camera. people that you've never met before preparing a bunch of food and sometimes it's really good sometimes it's garbage you know today it looks good though and I'm not just saying that either and desserts over there. We found Brad. He's over there. Brad's really weird. Get those fucking cameras out of here. He's practicing his acting. Look how convincing it is. Do it again, do it again. Get hey, tough. Get tough again. Brad, do your photo shoot face. <laughs> yeah. All right, dude Sweeney, you gotta put on some clothes, dude. For oh, real. Like no, I like oh, your sexy legs. I'm just afraid you're gonna get sick. You're killing my vibe, Sweeney. I'd like Can I borrow those shorts, though? <laughs> Thank you.